In this presentation, we will cover the risk of sudden death in athletic participation due to hydration-related problems. During this presentation, we will explore the importance of hydration in athletics, we will define and differentiate dehydration and hyponatremia, and review the epidemiology of both. We will discuss causes and prevention strategies for hydration-related crises and review current guidelines for proper hydration and exercise. We will list key components of recognizing hydration-related problems in athletes and discuss treatment options for those experiencing hyponatremia and dehydration. Finally, we will discuss specific considerations regarding hydration for athletic trainers. Water is a critical nutrient for the human body and is often a key component of nutrition management. Water helps maintain structural integrity of the cells. It acts as a medium for nutrient delivery and waste removal and acts as a solvent for molecules including glucose and water-soluble vitamins, minerals, proteins, and enzymes. Water lubricates the joints, heart, intestines, and the brain. Water also helps maintain appropriate body temperature an acid-base balance, and blood volume. The human body is made up of between 45 and 75 percent water by weight. The percentage of water makeup is determined largely by body composition. Muscle contains 75 percent water, while fatty tissue is comprised of just 20 percent water. Therefore, the more muscle tissue present compared to fat, the more water. Water also plays a crucial role in exercise in helping maintain thermoregulation. Dehydration is a very important risk factor for heat illness. Just 1% of body weight loss during exercise due to water loss increases the core body temperature by 0.12 to 0.2 degrees Celsius. Water is not the only essential component of hydration during exercise. Overall nutrient intake, electrolyte balance, and sodium intake also affect the athlete's hydration status. Water is essential for muscle contraction and nerve conduction. Therefore, without water, exercise and movement are impossible. When considering hydration, it is important to remember that it is a delicate balance between loss and gain, with the desired outcome being balance, no net gain or loss. Fluid is lost through urination, sweating, defecation, respiration, and vomiting. Fluid is gained through ingesting fluids, fruits, vegetables, and other foods, as well as through normal cellular metabolism, yielding both carbon dioxide and water. Dehydration is a condition characterized by excessive water loss from the body, leading to an increase in blood sodium levels. Dehydration may occur rapidly or develop over time due to cumulative effects of fluid loss and lack of replacement over time. Hyponatremia is a fluid electrolyte imbalance resulting in low concentration of sodium in the blood. Hyponatremia results from too much water being added to the system without sufficient salt intake. Dehydration occurs more commonly in men than women due to their higher sweat rates. However, hyponatremia tends to occur more frequently in women participating in activities lasting longer than four hours, such as marathons and triathlons. Older individuals who have a blunted thirst response are also at an increased risk for dehydration due to lack of water consumption. Athletes exercising in hot and humid environments are also more at risk for dehydration than those exercising in the cold. For example, a cross-country runner in August in Tennessee would be much more at risk for dehydration than an ice hockey player in Massachusetts. Hyponatremia has been found in 1% of military athletes, 30% of those being in long-distance or endurance athletes. One source cites 30% of Ironman triathlon athletes as suffering from hyponatremia. They are most at risk late in the race or after the finish of the race. Dehydration is caused by a failure to replace fluid loss during exercise. The average athlete will only voluntarily replace during exercise about half to two-thirds of fluid lost during exercise. Dehydration can also be caused by athletes rapidly cutting weight for weight-restricted sports. Sports like wrestling and powerlifting are notorious for cutting weight quickly and drastically. Also, consuming large quantities of protein has also been shown to increase risk for dehydration. 
Hyponatremia results when an athlete ingests too much hypotonic fluid and not enough sodium. This may result from poor intake during competition or a low-sodium diet on a regular basis. Hyponatremia may also result from exercising in hot and humid environments when sodium concentration of sweat may be increased or in poorly conditioned athletes. It has been found that conditioning decreases the sodium content of sweat. Preventing hydration-related problems in sports can be tricky because each individual athlete responds differently to different exercise and environmental conditions. Therefore, it is important to create an individual hydration protocol for each athlete in question rather than just follow a mass hydration protocol for all athletes. Loss of fluid can be calculated by calculating sweat rate with the formula listed. The average person's sweat rate is between half and 2.5 liters per hour. To prevent hyponatremia, it is important to ingest sodium on a regular basis as part of your meals. The athlete may also want to add one quarter to one half a teaspoon of salt to every 32 ounces of water. It is also important for the athlete concerned about hyponatremia to avoid over drinking. Dehydration can be prevented by beginning all exercises well hydrated and continuing to drink and stay hydrated throughout exercise. The thirst response may be delayed, so when those concerned about dehydration, they should begin consuming fluid prior to the onset of thirst. Finally, education is paramount when preventing hydration-related medical problems in athletes. Athletes need to know how to take care of themselves as well as the medical staff around them. Coaches should be educated on allowing water breaks and accessibility of fluid during practices and games. Teachers and professors should also be aware that athletes may need to consume food or fluids during class if they have practice or competition later that day. Thirst may or may not be a good indicator of hydration. As discussed, thirst response may be delayed or blunted. Different sources cite different thirst levels to drink to either too thirst or just beyond thirst. Generally, if you are concerned about hyponatremia, drinking too thirst should be sufficient, while if you are concerned about dehydration, an athlete may want to drink just beyond thirst and prior to the onset of thirst. Under normal conditions, not exercise, it is recommended that men consume 3.7 liters of fluid per day and women 2.7 liters. This fluid may come in the form of water or beverages or food. Sweat loss and exercise will increase the recommended fluid intake per day. Access to fluid during practice and competition must be easy and unlimited. It is inappropriate to limit an athlete's fluid intake during practice or competition. The only exception is by medical personnel if they are concerned for hyponatremia. Sports drinks tend to be more effective in hydration largely because they tend to be more palatable and athletes will ingest more of it. The sodium in the drinks also stimulates resorption of fluid by the body. Fluid and nutrient replacement should begin well before athletic activities. In general, two to three hours prior to exercise, the athlete should consume 16 to 20 ounces of fluid and then 7 to 10 ounces 10 to 20 minutes prior to exercise. It is important to note that athletes may be in class or in meetings during this time. During exercise, athletes should begin drinking prior to the onset of thirst and continue to rehydrate at regular intervals. At each water break, athletes should consume as much fluid as is comfortable or about 6 to 10 ounces every 10 to 20 minutes. If exercising for greater than 60 to 90 minutes, carbohydrate replacement should also be considered. After the completion of exercise, for each pound of fluid lost, the athlete should consume at least one pint of fluid, keeping in mind that not all of this fluid will be resorbed, and more than that much fluid may be necessary for full rehydration. Sodium chloride intake will also help stimulate water resorption. Keep in mind that after competition or practice, athletes may have other obligations such as press conferences and may need to be reminded about rehydration. Recognition of a problem is key in preventing further complications of hydration-related illness. Signs and symptoms of hyponatremia include overdrinking, nausea and vomiting, 
dizziness, much twitching, swelling or tingling, progressively worsening headaches, disorientation and altered mental status, exhaustion, pulmonary edema, CNS dysfunction, and cerebral edema. Cerebral edema results from sustained low plasma sodium concentration, creating an osmotic imbalance across the blood-brain barrier that forces rapid water influx into the brain. Swelling in the brain tissue leads to a range of symptoms from headache, confusion, and nausea to as severe as seizures, coma, pulmonary edema, cardiac arrest, and death. Hyponatremia can be measured objectively with a handheld analyzer. Hyponatremia may not occur immediately during exercise, but may begin hours after exercise. Dehydration is recognized by thirst, dry mouth, headache, dizziness, irritability, fatigue, cramping, weariness, apathy, and dyspnea. The athlete may also feel chilled or feel an intense heat in the head. A drop in body weight during activity, decreased urination, or dark, strong-smelling urine may also be indicative of dehydration. Dehydration may also be recognized by prolonged muscle soreness, cardiovascular and thermoregulatory problems, decreased performance, rhabdomyolysis, and renal failure. Hydration can be objectively measured by calculating total body water with plasma osmolality, with urine-specific gravity, urine osmolality, body weight change, or urine color. Body weight and urine color are the most convenient ways to track hydration. Some organizations restricting rapid weight loss in sports like wrestling use urine-specific gravity to determine hydration status at initial weigh-in and body composition measurement in order to determine a safe weight loss plan that must be adhered to in order to maintain eligibility. Body weight is a commonly used method of tracking fluid loss and hydration status after exercise. Weighing in and weighing out of practice is commonplace during heat acclimatization and in hot environments. Weight should not be gained during exercise. If weight is lost, 1% can lead to an increase in core body temperature. 1 to 1.5% of body weight lost will cause a feeling of thirst. 3 to 5% lost can result in cardiovascular strain and impaired heat dissipation. 7% body weight loss can lead to collapse and a medical emergency. For every 1 pound loss during exercise, that equates to about 1 pint of fluid lost. It is not uncommon for athletes to lose 2 to 6% of body weight during exercise. However, this fluid must be replenished immediately. Treatment for dehydration and hyponatremia involves reversing the cause, either too little salt or too little water. To treat dehydration, move the athlete to a cool environment and rehydrate with water and sodium to encourage water resorption. Weight must return to normal prior to resuming physical activity. Fluid replacement should not exceed fluid loss. If severe, the dehydrated athlete may require IV fluid replacement. However, the use of IV fluid replacement for less severe dehydration is controversial. When treating hyponatremia, the goal is rapid sodium replacement with foods high in sodium and low in fluid content. The athlete may require IV hypertonic saline if severe. Prior to transport for more advanced medical care, increased core body temperature and heat stroke must be ruled out. The use of IV fluids in and out of competition has been banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency since 2005. IV fluid replacement has not shown to be any more effective than oral replacement in mild cases. In severe cases of dehydration, when the athlete is unable to ingest fluids due to vomiting, it is appropriate to use IV fluid replacement. During the 2009-2010 NFL season, 75% of teams reported using IV fluids pregame. Those who used IV fluids cited player request, prevention of muscle cramping, prevention of heat illness, and prevention of dehydration as the reason for IV fluid use. As an athletic trainer, it is your responsibility to make sure practice and competition environments are safe, meaning that in some instances it may be necessary to alter practice or competitions if weather is unfavorable and may put athletes at risk for dehydration or hyponatremia. 
When considering hydration and fluid replacement plans, it is important to consider the nature of the sport in question. In a sport like basketball, athletes are frequently subbed in and out of play, and there are frequent stops in play when water may be available. In contrast, a sport like soccer requires the athlete to spend a much longer period of time in play without access to water. As much as possible, it is important to have water breaks and unlimited availability of fluid. It is also important to consider the form of fluids available. Will each athlete have their own bottle, or will there be a team water jug? Will there be cups, or will they fill their own bottles? Will there also be a sports drink available, sodium or carbohydrate replacement available? All of this is important to consider when planning for hydration management. College and high school athletes who are in class prior to play may need to begin hydrating in class, and they, as well as their teachers, should be aware of the importance of this. Finally, during two-a-day practices or double headers, it is important that cumulative dehydration be monitored. Remember, an athlete should not be allowed to participate until body weight has returned to normal.